Welcome to Stockholm and Sweden. My name is Matthias Goldman. I'm the Chief Sustainability Officer at Sweco, Europe's largest company for technical consultancy. We work a lot with sustainability, not least in the transport sector, and this is what I want to discuss with you, how Sweden aims to reach a fossil independent transport sector. So uh, how big is our share? That was the first question that a lot of us asked after we had the global Paris Agreement on climate. We came back home to Sweden and we realized that we had to work on climate even more efficiently and more in line with science in Sweden as well. And the first guesses were widely off the mark when politicians and business leaders and others were guessing how much of the total global impact on climate was Sweden's share. People would be guessing maybe 5%, maybe 3%, maybe 1% of the total global emissions. Nowhere near. Out of the total global emissions that influence the climate, Sweden's share is roughly 0.15%. Now some of you will think, well, what's the point in continuing to listen to what I'm presenting here. And that's also what one of the eight parties in the Swedish parliament thought. They said, well, if our share of the global emissions is just 0.15%, there's really no point in us focusing on climate. We should do other things. We can leave this to others and those big emitters, they have to deal with this. But there are luckily seven more parties in the Swedish parliament. From the very left to the very right, those seven out of eight parties in parliament decided that we are going to have a national plan for the climate. And they were sitting and thinking, well, why, why should we do that if our emissions are so small? And they realized that the only way a small country like Sweden can really make an impact is by being so relevant, so forthcoming, and so much of a front runner that others want to learn from Sweden. We want to be the global showcase for climate solutions. We want to be sort of the permanent exhibition for other countries to visit. We want to be the global help desk in terms of climate uh, for other countries and businesses around the world to call. And one way of doing that was to narrow down the main focus on what Sweden is doing on climate. Now, those of you who know a little bit about our tiny country up in the north of Europe realize that it's a small country, but it's still a country with long distances. It's a cold country. It's a transport-based country. Some of you will remember brands like Volvo, Scania, the truck manufacturer, and others. Uh, we are a transport-intensive country and a transport vehicle-producing country. So those seven out of eight parties, they decided the main climate target that Sweden is going to have is going to be within the transport sector. We are going to have a fossil independent transport sector. I was at a think tank at the time. And I and many others were asking, what is fossil independent? What does that even mean? For myself, for instance, I'm not dependent on beer, but you will find me time and again in a bar with a beer or two. Uh, so independent really didn't mean that much. But then the seven out of eight parties decided to put together a national commission where they had to answer this question. What is independent from fossil fuels? And they came up with the answer that Sweden is to reduce its climate impact between 2010 and 2030 by a full 70% in the transport sector. Now, how is that going to be done? This is the toughest target in the world when it comes to the transport sector. And this is not just cars and it's not just new vehicles either. It's the whole transport sector. In fact, in the beginning, shipping and aviation were not included, but then shipping and aviation themselves raised their hands and said, well, we want to be part of that target as well. This is going to be reached and you're going to learn three words of Swedish now. This is going to be reached by measures within the B, B and the B. The Bilen, the Bränslet and the Beteendet. The Bilen, that's all the vehicles from the small kick bike to the very large plane, the very large ship, the trucks, the buses, all the vehicles. B, Bränslet, that's all the fuels, including electricity, moving from fossils to renewables. And Beteendet, that's the behavior, all those things that mean that we commute less, that we are better at using public transport, that we share vehicles better. And when we look at how to reach the 70% target in equal measures within the vehicles, the fuels and the behavior. So that's the plan. And until now, we are not in line with this, which is reasonable because we also needed to 
reach out to others to say how we're going to meet this. And we need to find the best practices around the world so that we can be the global help desk to find the overall solutions to meet the climate target for the transport sector. Obviously, like in all other countries, a large part of reaching the climate target for the transport sector is electrification of vehicles. Not just cars like here, but from the e-bikes that enable us to commute longer than the regular bikes to the electrification of buses and trucks. And when it comes to the electrification of vehicles, of course, we're worried in Sweden that it's going to take a large chunk out of the budget uh, that we need money for welfare and other things and not necessarily to cars, which is why I think it's wise from the government, supported by the opposition parties, to introduce the bonus model system, where electric cars like the ones here, they receive a large bonus paid for by a large malus, a large extra tax, a fee bait, if you will, on the most polluting vehicles. And there's a checks and balances system so that as we approach 2030 and the electric vehicles and other renewable fuel vehicles, the hydrogen, the biogas, they get more common. Well, then we step by step increase the malus extra tax on the most polluting vehicles so that we never have to take money from the elderly or from childcare and give to the vehicles. Incidentally, 2020, this year, 30% of all new vehicles in Sweden are going to be chargeable. 2021, already one in every two, and then stepping up from there. In Sweden, there's about 10 million inhabitants and almost 5 million cars. And on average, there are unused 96% of the time. So clearly a part of reaching our target is also to be better at sharing vehicles. And that's why it's so important that we have large global car sharing companies as well as local players that insist on putting electric vehicles on the road for car sharing and they're used much more efficiently than the privately owned cars. Public transport is a great driver for the switch to renewability and in fact more than 90% of all public transport buses in Sweden are now run on renewable fuels like this one that runs on diesel done by forestry waste like the biogas buses that are used widely in Stockholm they use household waste or what we flush in the toilets more and more buses also use electricity which means that they pollute nothing locally and since the Swedish grid is very green there's almost no CO2 footprint either. In Sweden, an average car runs around 10,000 miles or 15,000 kilometers a year. A taxi, almost 10 times as much, which is why it's very important to reach our target and to reduce emissions that the taxi sector switches to renewables first. And that is why the Swedish National Authority for the Airports, Svidavia, has said that those taxis that come on electricity or hydrogen, they get their customers immediately. If you come on biogas, biodiesel, ethanol, you get your customers fairly fast. Whereas if you come with a fossil fuel in your taxi, you're gonna have to wait for hours and hours on your passengers. There's really no reason for you to come to the airports. And the airports are the largest places to find the most customers. So this has meant that the taxi sector has really been among the first movers from fossil to renewable. Let me be the first to confess that I've been really reluctant about whether or not this kind of micromobility is part of sustainable transport of the future. But clearly a Swedish actor like this one has taken sustainability seriously. They're looking at how they charge the uh, micromobility, so it's 100% renewable electricity. They're looking at where they place these bikes so that really replaces car usage and not biking. And uh, they're also much better now than just a year ago when they started in making sure that through geofencing, that this is not used in the not adequate places and that it slows down automatically in areas where you need to go slow and that uh, they teach us, in fact, you get a sort of driver's license for the micromobility in Sweden through players like this one. In Sweden until now, if you commute to and from work, you get a tax deduction. And that tax deduction is uh, partially based on the actual costs of commuting. And of course, if you commute by car or by public transport, you have an actual cost. Whereas if you commute by bike, the actual running cost per kilometer or mile is almost zero. That is not going to be changed, so there's going to be a transport neutral tax deduction for commuting to and from work, which I believe is going to mean that more people are going to do like I do, commuting by bike. That's going to mean less cars on the road, that's going to mean more space in the public transport, and that's going to mean us 
being all that much closer to reaching the goal of a transport uh, that's independent from fossil fuels. The Swedish home market is not big, so large Swedish companies within the transport sector say that this Swedish target really helps them to gain export orders around the world when we do things first that other countries are also doing. And multinational companies from around the world also say that they really want to focus on Sweden to learn what's happening here that is then going to happen at other markets. But now that we know each other a bit better, I want to be very honest with you, we are nowhere near reaching our targets in Sweden. We're not moving nearly fast enough. And that is why I reach out to you to please help bring the best examples to us, because we want to be sort of the melting pot of great things that are happening around the world so that we can reach a fossil independent transport sector with a 70% CO2 emissions reductions, and so that we can do this together so that it doesn't just become on one small market, but that it happens everywhere. Thank you so much for your attention.